Um, we represent chemical compounds with chemical formulas. And the formula is going to tell us what elements are in the compound and the relative numbers of each of them. So ionic compounds have ions. Molecular compounds have molecules composed of atoms. So that's why it says atoms or ions. We use a subscript that's a lowered number after the element symbol to tell how many there are. So we represent water as H2O. So this capital H stands for hydrogen, capital O stands for oxygen. The two after the hydrogen tells us there are two hydrogen atoms. There's one oxygen atom. We don't write the one because we don't really need to. If it was a, di a number different than one, like two or three or four, we would write that. If there were no oxygens, we wouldn't write the O. So you just write the element symbol and you don't write the number one. Here's another example, carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. So this is one carbon atom and four chlorine atoms. You do have to be careful with capital I's and the number one and lowercase l's. I actually changed the font um, on my PowerPoint slides because I got frustrated. The other font I was using, they all looked the same. That's a one, a lowercase l, and a capital I. It's not so very useful, right? When I write them in handwriting, um, a one is just a line. I put the crossbars or the serifs on the capital I, and I write the lowercase l um, as a script L so that I make sure that they look different. Um, they are different in this font. Um, you can still sometimes get them confused. So this one, you know, we don't want to think this is C for carbon, C for carbon, and capital I for iodine. But that's not a capital I. And we wouldn't write C two times in a row. If there were two carbons, we'd write C2. So we are very precise in how we write the formulas, but then we also have to be precise in how we look at them. Okay, any questions? There are different kinds of chemical formulas. Empirical formulas, molecular formulas, and structural formulas. Empirical is a word that means from experience. So an empirical formula is something that's determined experimentally. Um, we did some problems on that worksheet about ratios of masses of tin to masses of oxygen. Those are the sorts, uh, that's the sort of experimental data. And from that, you can figure out the relative numbers of atoms of each element in a compound. But you can't necessarily figure out how many atoms are in a molecule, but you can get the relative number. That's what an empirical formula gives you. So let's, let's look at hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide has the molecular formula of H2O2. So in one molecule of, of hydrogen peroxide, there are two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms, and they are bonded together. The empirical formula is the lowest ratio. And so there's one hydrogen for every one oxygen. This is the empirical formula. Empirical formulas are useful sometimes, but they don't give us all the information. It's like taking a fraction and reducing it, right? If you had a fraction 2 over 2, your math teacher would say you should reduce that. The simplest form of that fraction would be 1 over 1. So that's what we're doing here is we're taking the lowest ratio. A molecular formula. This is the type we use a lot. This gives us the actual number of atoms. So for H2O2 that we looked at earlier, the, the molecular formula is H2O2. The ratio is H to O, but there's actually two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. We can get the empirical formula from the molecular formula. This is an a molecular formula. And it's a ratio of 4 to 8. We could reduce that, and the empirical formula would be CH2.
stupid trains. This is an, uh, a molecular formula. It could be reduced. The empirical formula would be BH3. Okay. CCL4 is a molecular formula. That cannot be reduced. So the empirical formula and the molecular formula for that compound are the same. So if you're, if you're given a formula, if it is in the lowest ratio, you know it's an empirical formula. If it's not the lowest ratio possible, it's a molecular formula. But you can't always tell the difference just looking at the formula. Because if you get this one, you know that's an empirical formula, but you can't be sure if that's actually the molecular formula. So empirical is just the lowest ratio. Structural formula tells us how these things are actually connected. So we use lines to represent covalent bonds and shows how these things are connected. So we use a single line for a single bond, a double line for a double bond, and a triple line for a triple bond. Seems reasonable. So we've got these three different kinds of formulas. Why do we have them? Well, we use them in different circumstances depending on how much information we want to convey to another person or how much information we know or convenience because a structural formula gives us more information but it can be large and complicated and a molecular formula is much easier to write. So structural formula gives us the most information, empirical gives us the least. So let's write some empirical formulas for these compounds. We're given the molecular compound. So C5H12, what is the empirical formula for that? C5H12. You can't reduce 5 to 12. There's no common factors except 1, and dividing by 1 doesn't change it. So there the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula. How about HG2Cl2? HGCl. HGCl. So it was a ratio of 2 to 2. We divide both of them by 2. How about C2H4O2? CH2O. CH2O. So we take all the subscripts and divide by a common factor. Here it's 2. Questions? We also have molecular models. Um, these are three-dimensional, or they can be represented as drawings. And these are often going to give us some shape to the molecule. So a ball and stick model uses um, balls to represent the atoms and sticks to represent the bonds. And how they connect gives us a, an idea about the shape. When we use um, balls to indicate the atoms, we use different colors to indicate the different elements. You don't need to memorize these colors, um, but your book uses them pretty consistently. We use white to represent hydrogen, black for carbon, blue for nitrogen, red for oxygen, um, just so that we don't always have to label everything. Okay? In a model kit, those balls are, are color-coded in a similar way. So here's an example of a ball and stick model for CH4. Here's its molecular formula. Here's its structural formula. This shows that the carbon is in the middle and the four hydrogens are connected to it. Because could you think of other ways to connect these things? assuming that you don't know anything we haven't talked about in this class. Um, you could envision, well, maybe you stick them together like this, right? Hopefully you recognize that that's not going to work. Um, or, you know, maybe you want to do it like this. I mean, you could get all kinds of creative things. Uh, chemists don't necessarily encourage creativity, certainly not creativity like that. Those are not correct. Those, those can't happen for many reasons. But the, the structural formula is important because sometimes there are multiple ways that they could be connected, and those might actually be different compounds. Here's the ball and stick, gives us an idea of the shape. And then we have space filling models. And a space filling model gives us a more accurate um, idea of what a molecule might look like if we could see it. So it's not going to look like little balls connected with sticks. 
um, molecules are not tinker toys on a small scale. They're going to look more like this. These are easier to see. So we use all of these for different things. Here's a table that just shows you these different ways of representing uh, different compounds. If we look at this, this is the space filling model for glucose. Well, if you're just looking at a picture of it, you can't even tell what's on the other side of that, right? You can't see all of it. When we do a ball and stick model, it's much easier to see the individual atoms, even the ones are on the other side. But drawing something like that all the time would be a royal pain. Um, here's a structural formula that tells us how the different atoms are connected to each other and what types of bonds, and that's very useful for some things. But then a lot of times, just the plain old molecular formula is good enough. So we have different ways of representing the same thing. 